In this video, we will address a very common situation. What to do when your blood sugar is very high? The first step is to find out why blood sugar has become so high. Is it because of pain, stress, steroids, or illness? Have you just eaten a large amount of carbohydrates? Or did you change diabetes medication or forgot to take diabetes medication recently? Occasionally, the glucometer or your sensor is not accurate or you are not checking blood sugar correctly. I've heard people who had sugar on their fingers when they check blood sugar. If you suspect the glucometer is not working properly, you can check another person who does not have diabetes, or you can con use control solution to calibrate your glucometer. If you suspect the sensor is not accurate, you can verify it with a finger stick, as finger stick tends to be more accurate the next step is to decide how soon to treat it. It depends on how high the blood sugar is. The higher it is, the sooner you need to treat it. In addition, high blood sugar needs to be taken care of sooner for people with type 1 diabetes than people with type 2 diabetes. This is because people with type 1 diabetes are more prone to get diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a life-threatening condition. Generally, if you have type 1 diabetes and blood sugar is over 400, you need to bring it down in a few hours. But if you have type 2 diabetes, blood sugar is in the 200s, you may not go into diabetic ketoacidosis for days. What about type 2 diabetes with blood sugar in the 400s? Well, that's in a gray zone. I don't think anyone is able to accurately predict how soon you will be in trouble. The next step is to look at what medications you are taking for diabetes. Are you taking insulin? If not, you may have to start taking insulin if there is no other way to quickly reverse the blood sugar. If you are already on insulin, you may need to take extra short-acting insulin to bring the blood sugar down. Now let's look at a few examples. The first example is a lady with type 1 diabetes. She was having a flu, blood sugar went up to 500, she felt nauseous. As we have discussed, illness can raise blood sugar. Her blood sugar is very high and she has type 1 diabetes. So she will get into diabetic ketoacidosis very soon. I asked her to go to the emergency room immediately. Indeed, she had diabetic ketoacidosis and needed to be hospitalized. One thing I would like to mention here is, always keep some ketone strips with you so you can test your urine to see if you have developed diabetic ketoacidosis. Now this is a gentleman with type 2 diabetes. His blood sugar after dinner was 420. He forgot to take Basaglar in the morning, which is a long-acting insulin. In this case, his blood sugar was quite high, so it's better to take action soon. He took 14 units of Humalog according to his sliding scale, blood sugar went down to 190 in 4 hours. If you don't know what is sliding scale, there is a video on this topic. Basically, it is a scale that tells you how much short-acting insulin to take for each specific range of blood sugar. I asked him to wait till the next morning to get the next dose of Basaglar, because if he got one dose tonight, it will overlap with the dose tomorrow morning and cause low blood sugar tomorrow. The next example is a gentleman whose type 2 diabetes has been well controlled with metformin and actose. He injured his knee the day before and was in a lot of pain. Blood sugar went up to 270. As we mentioned before, pain can drive blood sugar up. Since he has type 2 diabetes and blood sugar is not that high, he may not need to bring it down immediately. The first thing to do is to take care of the reason for high blood sugar. In this case, it's a knee pain. So he started to take pain medication. His pain was better and his blood sugar went down to about 200. Now this is a lady with type 2 diabetes on metformin, Lantus, and Novolog. However, she just received steroid shot for arthritis and her blood sugar jumped to 450. She took 12 units of Humalog according to her sliding scale. 20 minutes later, she checked her blood sugar again. It was 390, so she took another 10 units of Humalog according to the sliding scale. 
She checked blood sugar again 30 minutes later. It was still 310, so she took another 8 units. Another 1 hour later, she was shaky and sweaty. Blood sugar was 54. So what happened here? As we know, steroid can raise blood sugar dramatically and it was correct decision to take short-acting insulin to bring it down. The problem is, short-acting insulin lasts for at least 3 to 4 hours. Since she took multiple doses of short-acting insulin within 1 hour, they overlapped and blood sugar bottomed out. You need to wait for the short-acting insulin to complete its work before taking another dose. That also means, in order to see its full effect, you need to wait at least 4 hours after dose of short-acting insulin before checking blood sugar again.